As of this moment, Niburu Inc. is trading at $0.34 per share, showing a modest intraday gain of 0.0037, or about 1.10%. Now, the immediate reaction for most people looking at a sub-dollar stock with a tiny green tick is to either dismiss it as insignificant noise or view it as a pure lottery ticket. The expectation is that you're looking at a company on the brink of failure or a speculative play with no real foundation. However, the reality of what's happening beneath that $0.34 price tag is far more specific and tied to the fundamental physics of how light interacts with copper, a metal that happens to be the bedrock of the entire global transition to electric vehicles and green energy. This isn't just random volatility, it's a direct reflection of a high-stakes bet on a very particular industrial technology that could either be worthless or find itself in the center of a manufacturing revolution. The common belief is that small hardware companies like this are a dime a dozen, destined to be crushed by larger established players. But that overlooks the one thing Niburu has, a potential solution to a problem problem that giants in the automotive and electronics industries are desperately trying to solve, which is how to weld and process copper efficiently, without defects. Looking at the recent trading patterns, the daily swings in Niburu's stock, while small in absolute dollar terms, are significant on a percentage basis. This kind of action attracts a specific kind of trader, often those using accessible platforms like the Robinhood app or SoFi Invest where the low share price makes it possible to take a meaningful position without a large capital outlay. The volume figures tell a story of skirmishes between hope and skepticism. On days with positive news or industry-related developments, we see volume spikes that suggest retail interest is piling in, perhaps speculating on a buyout or a major contract announcement. Conversely, on quiet days, the volume dries up and the price can drift downwards, indicating a lack of institutional conviction. This is not a stock you'll find anchoring Fidelity Mutual Funds or featured in a Schwab Intelligent Portfolios allocation. Instead, it lives in the world of self-investing, managed through an individual brokerage account where an investor has made a conscious decision to accept a much higher level of risk. For a potential outsized reward. The kind of person using the advanced tools on the interactive broker's trading platform might be modeling the probability of Niburu's technology being adopted versus the probability of the company needing to raise more capital and dilute existing shareholders. The reality is that for a company of this size, its stock price is less a reflection of its quarterly earnings and more a barometer of its financial runway. Every dollar of cash burn is scrutinized. Recent filings show a company actively managing its finances, which from the outside can look like desperation, but from the inside is about survival and buying more time for its technology to prove its worth. The expectation is that such financial maneuvering is a death knell. The reality is that it's a necessary part of the life cycle for a pre-commercialization deep tech firm. Investors using a platform like Fidelity, which offers extensive research tools through its Fidelity trading platform, might be digging into these filings, trying to understand the terms of recent financing rounds and what they imply about the confidence of its capital providers. It's a far more complex picture than what you see with blue chip names like Apple stock or Nvidia stock, where the conversation is about PE ratios and market share. Here, the conversation is about patents, material science, and survival. Many newer investors exploring online investing for the first time might not realize the immense difference between buying a well-established company and a speculative one like Niburu. That's why getting solid invest-in help and understanding the specific 
risks is so critical before allocating capital. So, what does Naburu actually do? The company designs and manufactures high-powered blue lasers. This might not sound particularly exciting, but the color of the laser is everything. For decades, the industrial standard has been infrared lasers. They're powerful and versatile. However, when it comes to highly reflective materials like copper and gold, infrared lasers face a major problem. These metals reflect most of the infrared light, meaning the laser has to be incredibly powerful just to get enough energy to absorb into the material to create a weld. This process is inefficient and often results in spatter and defects, which is a massive problem when you're manufacturing something as critical as an EV battery pack, where a single bad weld can be catastrophic. Blue light, having a shorter wavelength, is absorbed by copper up to 20 times more effectively than infrared light. This means Naburu's blue lasers can theoretically weld faster, with fewer defects, and using less energy. The expectation is that a laser is a laser. The reality is that the wavelength of light is a critical factor that can unlock massive efficiencies in manufacturing. This is the entire thesis that underpins the company. The potential applications are significant, from the battery packs in a vehicle like a Tesla to the intricate copper connections within the next generation of semiconductors. Let me know in the comments below, which industry do you believe stands to benefit fit the most from defect-free copper welding. The business model is straightforward. Develop and sell these specialized laser systems to industrial clients in sectors like e-mobility, electronics, and aerospace. The challenge, however, is immense. They are competing against a deeply entrenched industry built around infrared technology. The sales cycle is long and requires extensive testing and validation from potential customers. Any investor looking at this on SoFi stocks or another platform needs to understand that this is not a fast process. This is a battle of inches, convincing one engineer at a time, one factory at a time. The older financial reports show a history of operating losses and cash consumption, which is entirely normal for a company in this phase. The critical question for anyone considering an investment here is whether the technology's performance advantage is compelling enough to overcome the inertia of the manufacturing world. This involves not just the technology itself, but the company's ability to provide service, support, and integration into existing production lines. It's a question of execution, not just invention. People managing their finances through Fidelity Wealth Management or looking into Fidelity IRAs for long-term holds would likely be advised to stay away from such a volatile name. This is a stock for the active, informed trader who understands the underlying science and the market dynamics at play. Looking ahead, the future of Naburu presents a starkly binary set of possibilities. The bull case scenario is that a major automotive manufacturer, a battery producer, or a consumer electronics giant publicly validates and adopts their blue laser technology for a key production line. Such an announcement would serve as a massive de-risking event. It would transform the company's narrative from a speculative R&D firm to a critical supplier in a high-growth industry. The stock would almost certainly react dramatically as the market repriced its future earnings potential. This could create a domino effect, where other manufacturers, fearing they'd be left behind, would rush to evaluate and adopt the technology as well. This is the reality that bulls are holding out for, the catalyst that would make the current 0.34 share price look like a distant memory. The path to this outcome is fraught with challenges, but it represents a tangible opportunity. Conversely, the bear case is equally compelling and centers on two main risks competition, and cash. While Naburu has a strong intellectual property portfolio, they are not the only ones working on blue laser technology. Larger, better capitalized competitors in the industrial laser space are undoubtedly aware of the opportunity and are likely developing their own solutions. A larger player could potentially develop a competing technology or even a superior one, effectively closing Naburu's market window. The second and perhaps more 
more immediate risk is the company's cash position. Developing, manufacturing, and selling complex industrial hardware is incredibly capital-intensive. If Naburu is unable to secure major commercial contracts soon, it will inevitably need to raise more capital and dilute existing shareholders, but putting significant downward pressure on the stock. This is the reality that bears are focused on, the risk that the company simply runs out of time and money before its technology can gain widespread adoption. Investors on various investing sites need to weigh these two starkly different potential futures. In conclusion, the story of Niburu is a classic case study in the tension between market expectation and underlying reality. The expectation, driven by its low share price, is that of a generic high-risk penny stock. It's an easy label to apply and dismiss. But the reality is far more intricate. You have a company built on a specific, scientifically grounded premise that the physics of blue light offers a tangible, valuable solution to a critical problem in modern manufacturing, particularly in the supply chains for electricity and electronics. The stock's daily movement is not just noise, it's the market's real-time debate over whether this premise will translate into commercial success